So we uh, made a bit of a miscalculation and didn't realize that there's nothing nearby for dinner and we're both starving. So right now our options are probably fruit to go bars, um, hopefully a convenience store nearby, or the first thing we picked we have little chocolate oranges um, in our room, which is handy for nothing <laughs> to fill our hunger, or we have a nice healthy liquid diet that we got from the uh, duty-free shop. So we got, let's see, um, the birch. yeah, there's um, birch flavored liqueur, and that's one, some very Icelandic beer, Kogul, I think, um, uh, schnapps with uh, lichen in it, so that seems fun for for a good time. And um, oh. more beer, two board, green. I don't know what that means. So to dinner. <laughs> However, it may be. I think the most prominent thing we can say right now is that it's easier to remember how to drive standard again than it is to work the Icelandic gas pumps and figure out how to start this car. I mean, it's cheap, but it also comes with the fact that it has a wonky um, ignition. Ignition. So, I guess we get what we pay for. <laughs> and I am devastated by the existence of trees on the island of Iceland. Yeah, I really was thinking that there was going to be no trees anywhere. Look at that! That's a pine tree! Yeah, that's a healthy pine tree. I am devastated. I've been... I've been lied to. Horizontal or vertical, and these ones are vertical. 
So these are vertical volcanic columns. Yep. And they're hexagonal in shape. That's interesting. I wonder what about the heat of the volcano makes it go into the hexagonal shape as opposed to any other, you know, shape out there. Oh, I just heard a goat! <laughs> I feel like we should mention that the climb up here has been covered, covered in lamb shit. Everywhere you look. These little fuckers roam everywhere. <laughs> I don't know if there's a goat nearby or if sound just carries really well. I think sound just carries really well. That goat sound like it's really cool. I know. Maybe it's on the top of the columns. I want to hug you! Nah. Seriously, if I don't hug a goat, I'm, I'm going to be upset. <laughs> no one is stopping to admire this. Everyone just keeps going down the road. We're the only people here. Yeah. It makes me, you know, feel really glad I'm not in, you know, some place like Greece where there's millions of tourists at any given spot. And here, this crazy natural wonder that I've never heard of anywhere else. There's just us. As we traverse this lava field, you see calves like this, necks and crannies. Today, we know me hunt. <laughs> Here, no me, no me, no me, no me, no me, no me. So, this guy here is apparently the deity of Mount Snefios. I am really curious as to know what's in that cave. Dumbledore? Harry? Hey? Hey? Is there a Horcrux in there? Here's another beautiful cave where you can see the lava formations. Over Probably centuries and centuries. Yeah, well folks, we found the glacier. Yes, we successfully found him. And it looks like the fog is quickly forming in around us again. Yeah, it moves in and out pretty quickly. Oh yeah, fuck yeah, there's a fucking glacier. I'm um, sorry for oh, all wow. the cursing. It's so beautiful, do you see how blue it is? Why yeah. is it so blue? Or at least a part of a glacier. It's one of the divisions of it. You can hear, oh, here's a glacial stream right here. 
but that water is so clean. Stay cold. It's not surprising. What's it taste like? Alcapina. <laughs> you should let them know that. Are you ready? All right, one, two, three. <laughs> we are on a glacier. Both times. No, I hit your back the first time. Oh, did you? I have video, uh, videographic proof. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it's awesome. <sighs> kind of barren and Mars-like, but still awesome. Oh, so barren and Mars-like. <laughs> Let's make a snowman. Okay. <laughs> bye bye snowman we can totally slide down there do you want to slide I thought you were going to bum slide Seems fun too. I want to bum slide <laughs> you sure you just don't want to ski down? You're, you're pretty much, you're just scooting. <laughs> I'm <sort of> sliding. <laughs> Whee, <tobogany. laughs> Carrie Benninghaus. Perhaps the first person to rub her butt on this glacier. <laughs> Ooh, that was a good, good bump mark on the An Icelandic national treasure. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Uh, cold. Sorry. It's freezing now. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, back in the car. Oh my gosh, it's so cold. Shake it out. Oh Alright. We've seen and butt scooted on a glacier. Yeah, I feel pretty successful about it. <laughs> Even by itself, that's an accomplishment for a day. Yeah. Iceland is so awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna go try and hug a lamb. I'm gonna get my phone ready. Hey. You guys wanna hug? No, Carrie, they don't wanna hug. I think they knew better, that was the problem. I just wanted to give them a little hug. Just a little hug. <laughs> and then put them in the car. And then take them with us. No big deal. It's okay. Alright, let's go. Thing. <laughs> There's people behind us this time. You guys like people? How close behind us? I'm oh, pretty far now. Hmm? I don't see him. Okay, he tries to hug a lamb. Goat, part two. Their horn. Why don't you love me? 
fuck. I just give up. <laughs> These ones seemed less afraid. Yeah, but as soon as you got out. They decided they hated you. Son, today's the day you have to kill a fish, and this is how you do it. Slice. That goes in, come out. That goes in, gets come out. So we are at the fish museum at Helisanda, and we got in right as they were closing, so we get a nice free tour. It smells great in here. This is an old turf building. I feel the need to point out something for all soccer lovers everywhere. This is quite possibly the coolest soccer field ever. So, we're in the middle of the lava field, and BAM! There's a soccer field. So, you see with that one? You just slide right down. <laughs> These battle tubes look awesome and hilarious. So we are on Lake... Uh, wait, no. Ocean. Yeah, we're on the ocean. That's what we left behind. And the Sneffels-Ness Peninsula. And we're heading to Flatty Island in Westfjord. Yeah.
Sea Monster Museum, to be more specific. Although he doesn't look very aquatic. So that's a shore laddie. He's the smallest of all the sea monsters, and is also the most common. He lives in the forest of marine vegetation on which he also grazes. He's been sighted on shore every once in a while, but he's uh, particularly attracted to pregnant women, which, thank God, I am not. <laughs> this tunnel that goes right under uh, the mountain range above us and it's quite a bit different than the last tunnel that we went under that went under a fjord. This one is like is a one-way tunnel which is kind of terrifying because you know if someone's coming in the opposite direction I'm not really sure what happened. I guess someone has to back up until you get to one of these areas. Now looking out on the Cape of Isafjordur, which is over there, just around that mountain. This is the capital of the north. Not to be confused with the other capital of the north that most people know, Winterfell. <laughs> surface of the lava, when the lava, thin flowing lava, solidifies on the surface quickly, flows over flat land, just like calm water, still moving a little bit and it's forming this ring, like when you push the back of the hand, that is how these ropey lavas are, are formed, very beautiful, typical in this type of lava.
<laughs> it's funny to see light again. Yeah, <laughs> natural light. Yeah, so right now we're entering the Akure Botanical Gardens and it has apparently all of the plants that can be found in Iceland and a few from other places in other Nordic countries. A few flowers of Canada. <laughs> So we are entering Grotagia, Tajka caves, lava caves. Um, they, there was an outlaw, John Markelson, who lived here in this cave for quite a while, and then it was used as a bathing site um, until the temperature of the water rose because of a fissure that happened, and uh, it's also the site for the filming of the fifth episode of the third season Game of Thrones, Kissed by the Fire, so, womp. So, this is quite a nice cave to live in. <laughs> the water is so clear. So here we are at the Hiberiv, Hiberiv, Hiberiv Mountains. And right when you walk out of the car, the smell hits you right in the nose. <laughs> it's so sultry. But it's really amazing to see, you know, the earth actually breathing. Oh god, it smells like eggs. <laughs> It's a very Mars-like landscape, though. The second we cross the hills, it's completely changed. Poof. So cold groundwater sinks down to the magma intrusions, where it's heated and transformed into steam, and then it comes back to the surface. Along with the steam comes femoral gas, which contains the sulfur, which you can smell. In the hot springs area, sulfur deposits form when the gas mixes with air. But in the mud pots, the gas rises through the surface water, producing sulfuric acid, which makes the, acid, the water acidic. Rock and soil dissolve in this acid water, producing the mud. Why? It looks the way it does. The only way back to the car is through this. Okay. Ready, Duncan? You ready? One, two, three. Here she is. Right by Krafla Volcano, where you can see that smoke coming from over there. I know this video probably can't do it justice, but this is where you can actually see where an old lava flow that's centuries old, probably thousands of years old, meets one that's only about 30 years old. You can see how Iceland is formed with layer after layer of lava forming on top of one another. And here you can also see too the fissures that are occurring even still. This part of Iceland by Mývatn is right on two tectonic plates and unlike most parts of the world where they're pushing together, here they're pulling apart. So every year 
they get an extra two centimeters or so of land. And this is causing the um, hot magma underneath to start to bubble up and cause fissures and more you know, volcanic eruptions. This is a great example of the fissuring that's happening around this region. We can see that the plates are pulling apart and the rocks are being pulled in two different directions. Just when you look around, it kind of takes your breath away to think of the power of this. I mean, it's just magma fields as far as the eye can see. Just absolutely nothing but black. And Carrie's trying to stick her head in a <laughs> so now we're in the yeah, Nevedon Natural Hot Baths. It's basically like Blue Lagoon, only cheaper and quieter. water just from today's melting. Can you imagine how big Vatna Shokol is to produce this much water every day from its glacial pores? So right now we're on the uh, part of the National Park. It's comparable to the moon where they send astronauts to train in preparation for their landing. So. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Moonwalking. <laughs> and this is Askja. And it is snowing. This is the bathing pool we're going to go into later. Here's Carrie, skinny dipping on the top of a mountain in a not so hot hot spring. Oh, I am freezing to death. I'm trying to dry off. And coming into the lead is pumice stone number one. Look at them go. Oh, caught in the riverbed. And they're pulling to the lead is the other one. Oh, but not far behind comes big lug. This is just kind of exciting you can imagine here at rock racing. Pumice stone rock racing. Oh. Looks like this rock is bowing out. He's got a good lead! Oh no, what's the cut? Action, action, action!
seriously, such a tease. So stroker geyser, the most active geyser in all of Iceland. <laughs> Goes off about every five minutes. the lava comes from very far below the surface and it has a high iron content. So these red and orange areas you can see from that. There's also little yellow patches and yellowish rocks, it's probably sulphur um, and green is from copper. So these different colours within this particular rock um, is because of the different minerals within it. So on the surface of lava fields generally it's because of different types of ones, black, purple, colour. That's because the surface cools a lot more quickly. Yeah. Um, but behind where it's more sheltered, where the wall's broken away in some places, you can see these different colours. And when the lava cools more slowly, these minerals take on their signature colour. Um, it's known as the god, because it was big. <laughs> um, but sometime during the 1960s, uh, someone came in, broke it off and took it away. What? Yeah. <laughs> so you don't know where it is now, it's just no. in someone's house probably. Yeah, there's a room with it, it's in someone's garden in Reykjavik. <laughs> <laughs> spotted uses a bird bath or an ashtray or something like that. <laughs> something unimpressive. Um, but it was calculated that this would have been around two meters tall uh, from the base to the tip. And it would have weighed hundreds of kilograms. As I mentioned before, this rock's very, very um, dense because it's compressed by all the lava that drips onto it. He must have been very desperate to get it out of there then. Yeah, it would have been <laughs> extremely difficult. But you can see further in the cave, some of the larger stalagmites like this have been cut off and it looks almost as if at some point someone's just gone through and picked what they like and just taken it out, which is a real shame. There's so many of them. They're just draping, they're just covering in the walls. Yeah. And they all have these little water droplets on the end. It looks like a starry sky. <laughs> When in Iceland, you stop for horse crossings. <laughs> They're so lovely there. Banging their heads to the music. Oh, I had a beard. They all have beards. <laughs> a lot of them have beards, Duncan. Shut up. No, oh, got a couple stragglers. <laughs> Lidge bombs. Oh, be on the face. Trying to impress us. Oh no. He's moving now, Kevin. Uh, also a car coming.
took place. Um, it's basically known as the Northern Pompeii, where a large volcanic eruption totally redefined this island and buried a lot of the houses underneath it. If you look right behind me, this here is known as Pompeii for Yamia or Westman Islands. Right underneath all of this lava is an entire part of the town completely buried. Whole subdivisions now covered by magma. At least 50 meters down. Yeah, at least 50 meters down. Imagine never seeing your home again. All of your belongings buried underneath magma. Could you imagine having your homes be some of these ones when the Hame eruption started? A lot of these streets now are dead ends, and they they're they, staying that. Yeah, they're staying that way, but they didn't used to be. They didn't used to be. It's always fun to get to the Festival Islands, right, Duncan? Yeah, just for an hour. <laughs> this entire island just kind of looks like someone went crazy with the roller coaster tycoon, like land, train management. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
This is drop cross. The glacier icebergs are formed and then enter the sea. Alright, this is sheep hugging attempt. I don't even know. Four. Alright, we're gonna do this. We're gonna be very quiet. There's another one. That one's mocking me. <laughs> uh, okay. Failure number four. We here to stay. We here to stay. We here to stay. Howling ghosts they reappearing. Mountains that are stacked with fear. Chara King. I'm going to post this is a beautiful hump of rain.
So guys, those of you that are going to jump, there's only one jump at a time. Uh, you jump from where we tell you to jump. And when you look at the water, it's very evident what is deep and what is not deep. Can I go? Yeah. Oh. Surrounded by water, in this ocean at the edge of the world. 